Hi guys, uh, welcome back. I just want to quickly go through what we've built so far, um, and then we'll move on to the next one. So what we've built here is a points per game breakdown per team. You can pick a team. I'm going to choose Boston. Um, you can see the player's information based on what you pick here. You can sort the switch. So we might want to look at points per game. We might want to look at minutes per game. Um, these are per game metrics because we have so many metrics we kind of categorize them different different things we can look at per 48 minutes um, and etc pretty much this is a breakdown per player or, or for a team by player um, for any metric you want then here we have this player comparison tool where we pick players you can type in any player you want um, So if I type in Jason Tatum here, the stats are going to change. This is his information, and this blue highlights the one, the person who has the highest value in each of these categories. It's working similarly similarly to others. We're looking at per game metrics. We can look at per 48 metrics, or we can look at our, our key metrics only. Um, and you could also use this as a drop down if you want to. Um, I don't know, Andre Iguodala. And this is a way to compare players. And the league average is based on the minutes played per game. So right now we're looking at players for the league average who have played between 0 and 48 minutes per game. But if we wanted, let's say we have a lot of high minutes players that we want to compare, we might decide, you know, only players that played between 30 and 40 minutes per game. And you'll see that these values change accordingly. And as we move down, we have this player profile thing. Um, where we pick a player and then a lot of information about that player comes up. And this pretty much blue means good um, or high percentile for that metric. And red means not so good. And this is a chart comparing the player's percentile to the position percentile. And the position percentile is also based on the minutes played per game. So if we're looking at a guy like Aaron Gordon who plays 32 and a half minutes per game, Right now, the position percentile is based on 10 to 40 minutes per game. But we might decide, you know, maybe it's between 30 and 40 because that's closer to the amount of minutes that Aaron Gordon plays. If I click on that, you'll see this chart change. And this is a dip, so that paints a different picture for Aaron Gordon's performance in each of these metrics compared with someone that plays similar minutes at his position. And then we have this chart that goes through player versus position shot location. So Dark blue is free throws, medium blue is three-pointers, and light blue is two-pointers. And this is just a quick insight into how a player compares with the rest of their position, where they're taking shots from. Aaron Gordon is pretty par with his position, but if you look at a guy like James Harden, for example, 35% of his shots um, or of his attempts are from the free throw line, which is way higher than the rest of his position. So I hope that makes sense. And now what we're going to build is a, another player comparison tool. But this time we're going to look at two metrics at the same time. Um, this is a little bit of a different analysis. And I'm going to copy and paste what we have right down there to start. And I'll say, I'll call this player, some player comparison tool v2 for now. And I'll probably rename it later. And what we're going to create is we're going to create a scatter chart where we pick as many players as we want and they appear on this scatter chart so that we can compare, I don't know, like someone's, let's say we have assists on the y-axis and points per game on the x-axis. We can kind of see how players fit amongst each other um, looking at multiple metrics at one time. So that's the purpose of this video. I think it's pretty cool. You'll see in, in the end, um, I'm sure that it that it could provide value. And what we're going to do first here is, and what I'm going to do separately, we learned how to get images in um, to profiles in the previous video. I'll probably update this to include a player image somewhere um, because I think that that would look cool. But anyways, what we're going to do first is We've already have these drop down menus of players where we can type the player's name in or we can select from the drop down and I'm just going to copy what we have here already or maybe I'll, co I'll, I'll copy this one. They're all the same and I'm just going to paste it right here and paste it right here and paste it right here. 
I'm gonna the the number of times we paste this is the number of players that you'll potentially be able to select from. And let's say we want a max of 15 players. So right now we have five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll copy all these. Oops. Control C to copy all those, and I'll paste them here, and I'll paste them here, and maybe I'll make the font a little bit smaller so that it fits and it doesn't take up so much of a space and then maybe I'll expand A out a little bit. It'll make other things bigger too, but that's okay. We have space to work with on the right hand side. It's always good to have space to work with. So we have 15 players and now we need to set up our data. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into our dash filtered area. This is pretty much it looks ugly. We can make it look nice, but this is where we organize all of our information um, that we use in this dashboard. So pretty much all of our information that we use lives in here, and that drives all these visualizations. Uh, we use some other things too, but not to drastic extents. I'm going to remove this. That's from the last video. And we're just going to set up another kind of area for our investigation. So this is for our player versus position graph. This is for getting averages that we need. Um, and this is for our team breakdown by player graph. And I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it beneath here. And I'm gonna call this um, player versus player scatter because it's gonna be a scatter plot. Now, what we need to do is I'm just gonna label these. I'm gonna say player one, player two. And one thing that you can do in Google Sheets or Excel is if you select these two, it's generally smart enough to know that you're just adding one number after the other and I can just drag this down and it'll go all the way up to player 15 which is the most that we need and I will delete that and now what I want in here is the player name that's associated with player 1 player 2 and I'm gonna go equals and the first player in our list so what we're assuming is that this is player 1 player 2 player 3 and that'll, so when we select a player, that'll be a player that goes on to the visualization. And I'll click enter. So I'm just saying that equals the name that's selected there. And let's drag this down to the bottom. And what we can see here is if I go to my, let's say, the dash and I change this name to um, Anthony Davis, for example. Um, and maybe I change another one to LeBron James. And I'll change another one to Russell Westbrook. Now, if I go back in here, we'll see that the player names change. And what we hope to have is data for each of these players um, that we use for the graph. Now, we need to know what metrics we want to select. And let's take a step back here. I'm going to go back. And we've already done this. Again, we've done this a lot. So if you've been following along with the videos, you know how to do these things. Um, and we've already created these things. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a metric type and we're going to have a metric to pick from uh, so that we know what to display in the chart. So I'm going to copy this metric type that we have here. All it is is, is a drop down menu um, that looks into a list. And I'm just going to paste it, I don't know, up here and up here. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to copy the metric and I'm going to paste it here and here. Oh, it looks like they're merged cells. So let's just drag this over a little bit. And okay, that's fine. Let's drag that over a little bit. And what I'm going to, and, and we'll deal with the merging later. This is going to be the x axis. And this is going to be the, <laughs> and I'm going to try to drag this over to the, almost to the end. It's not exactly where I want it. All right, and this is going to be the y axis. So the metric that we select here will be the y-axis, the metric that we select here will be the x-axis, and then the players will end up being on a scatter chart. So now aside from the rest of the, uh, aside from the, the chart formatting, which is sometimes a pain, uh, the rest is easy. So we've already done all of this essentially uh, before in other ways, but this is just going to be similar to what we've done before. So maybe I actually drag all this down a little bit one slot and this is going to be our x-axis so i'll go equals and i'm going to go up to our dashboard and select this metric 
and click enter. And then I'm gonna, this is gonna be our y axis. And I can even write that here if I want. Let's say x axis, y axis. And we'll go equals and the data that will be our y axis, which is this one. It happens to be the same. Oop, this one. Oh, it's merged. That's why. Okay. Enter. Now we're gonna use index match just like we've done before. So the way that we can do this is let's do it from scratch. In case you haven't seen any of the other ones, we'll go equals index. This is what do we want to get in here? What do we want to fill this cell? Well, we want something in our data set, which we're taking from basketballreference.com, and that is anything in our data set. We're looking for something in this large data set. I'm going to go all the way. I'm, I'm, I'm just selecting everything in it. And I'm going to lock in the cells with dollar signs. So we're going to look from dollar sign A to dollar sign 1, which is the first cell, to dollar sign BW to dollar sign 678. That includes our whole table. We're looking for something in there, comma. Now it's saying, okay, which row do you want to get this thing from? We could pick a row, like we could say row number 2, for example. But that wouldn't get us the data for the player that we select. So we need to match, we need to use another formula called match to match the player that we select to the player that's in the row that we want the data from. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. And the first one is a search key. And that search key is the player that we select. Oops, I didn't mean to go to the dashboard. I meant to go here. We want to match this player here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in the column, but not the row, so that I can drag this formula down later. I want to match this person, whoever this is, which is the person that we select in our dashboard, to the player name. And I'm going to lock this in, too, in our table, comma, zero. It has to be an exact match. So that's how I find the row. I, I find the player name. Um, that we select in this list of players, and that's the row of data we want. Now we need to tell Google Sheets what column of data we want. And again, we can just type in a number. We want data from column three for that player um, in this row. But again, we want to be able to match this so because we want to select the metric. So I'll say match. Now what are we matching? We're matching, uh, I can't even see the metric, but I'm going to start with this one. It, I actually meant, mean to click the one under the x-axis, but I can't get to it right now. So we'll match this metric to, let's go to our table, the header in our table, because that's the way that we've done things. And I'll do that right here. Is All our metrics are called our, our header names. So if we change a name in our header, it'll change the name of the metric. But since we're pulling the data from basketball reference, we actually don't change the names of our headers, or we shouldn't, or you will, bad things will happen. So I'm going to lock this in. So we're matching the header name to uh, the metric we select, comma, zero, an exact match. And I'm going to close some parentheses and click enter. I have an error, and that is because we are not matching the right cell. Like I said, I couldn't reach the x-axis cell. The cell for our x-axis metric is K17. So let's change J to K and click Enter. And now this would be Anthony Davis's points per 48 minutes. And like I do with all my formulae is type in if error at the beginning and an open parenthesis. So now if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma, let's make it blank. And and that click enter and now we should be able to drag this down and we have points per 48 minutes for all these players most of them being the same in james harden so let's just just so i can see things better let's make that a nicer decimal we can copy this and paste it over here but now the only difference that we're making is instead of matching k to the uh, to the metric in our database, we're matching L. Because, and that could be, right now it's the same metric, which is a bad on me part, bad example, but I'll change it and we'll see. So now it's matching to L for the metrics in our database, and let's drag that down. 
doesn't really matter how far down it goes, but I just want it to be consistent. So um, just erase the formula in there. And now let's go to our dashboard and let's see if this works. So let's change the last player to someone. Let's say um, Jared Allen. And let's change this metric to be not even per 48. Let's say it's a it's one of our key metrics and it's a whoops. I didn't oh my apologies. I didn't uh link these these things together. So I need to link these things together, but that's okay. Um points for 48 and two pointers for 48. And if we go to our dash filtered, we see that the last player is now Jared Allen and the per per 48s are are different or this one is different so why here let's go back so why is this not updating with this well the reason is because this list or these two lists are linked to this the list for this metric type so if i change this to total for example yeah this will go to to the total stats but also these ones will be will only be filtered down to the total stats and we we don't want that we want these to be governed off of these and the way that we're, we can do that is let's go to our lists i know this is a lot to look at this is the other messy area of our sheet but see this how this says total this is looking at that is looking at this and it's creating a list of the total metrics based on what this says we just have to do this again two more times for the x-axis x axis and the y-axis for our new chart so let's do this so this is for the original chart and then we're going to use a formula called indirect to get the metrics but let's say this is equal to m is equal to our x-axis which is right here and n is equal to our y-axis, which is right here, or right here. And let's make both of these bold. And now we can just copy this formula and apply it, or let's we can create it from scratch to get a list for each of these ones. We'll go equals indirect. Go to our dash for this. And I'm just going to lock that in. Click enter. And now what we've done is we've made this list, we've made this here control that list, whereas our other graph is independent. And there's still one more step that we need to do to make this connect. And we just need to redo our data validation right here. So I'm going to go to data when I have this cell selected, validation. And the list in our other chart was looking at L2 to L85 in our lists. And I'm going to click on this to select data range and remove that and go to our lists. So our other chart was looking at column L to generate the list. Now for this dropdown, we want to look at this. I'm just going to go down to, down to 27 um, to look at our list. And I'll click OK, click Save. Now when I go to my dashboard, we have an error because 3P or 3 pointers is not a per game metric. And if I click on this, it will be per game metrics. And then if I change this to be per 48, now it's going to be per 48 metrics. So we did that once. We just have to do it one more time. Let's go back to our lists. I'm just going to copy this formula and paste it here for our Y axis. But I'm going to change again. So I'm not looking for let's just do it again so indirect instead of looking at f90 which was the cell for our x-axis we're going to be looking at this one here which is n90 or m90 whichever one it decides to give me because it's a merged cell and i'll close the parentheses and click enter and now notice these are our key metrics and i needed to redo the validation with this cell here so i'm going to go click on the cell and go to data data validation just like we just did and this is also looking at l2 to l85 which was for the first chart up above 
and let's change the range that we're looking for for our drop down and let's just select all the way down to 27 like we did with the last list and when you're selecting the list for drop downs it should it should encompass as many rows as necessary to accommodate for as many metrics as you have with the potential that you might add more metrics and i know i'm not adding any more at least for right now so 27 is is enough for me and i'll click ok and i'll click save now when we go to our dash again um, we're on our key metrics here so when i click this it'll go to just our key metrics and now we can actually start visualizing this stuff so let's go to our dash filtered here now that we have our everything's operational let's just select let's call this player and let's select all this information our 15 players and go insert chart and google sheets gives us an idea of what we might want for a chart this is not the chart that i want so in the setup i am going to go change from a column chart to a scatter chart i would like i think there are slight issues with both of these that aggregate that frustrate me a little bit um, the bubble chart would be great to use and it knows what to do but you can't adjust the size of the bubbles just in general you could adjust it by a metric but um anyways it's neither here nor there so i'm just going to use a scatter chart because the bubbles are too big for me so i'm going to go to a scatter chart and i am going to change this around a little bit right now the x-axis is player we do not want that we can remove that and our series are our two metrics we want one of our series to be a metric i'm going to remove one of them and we want the y-axis to be the other metric so uh, or the x-axis i guess in this case to be the other metric which our first one is fga for 48 our second one is turnovers per game and then i want to add a label to these dots so i'm going to click here on our series and say add labels and now we know which players associate with which dots and i'm going to show you another strategy to kind of go about this a little bit um, which will be fun to go through but now we have a scatter chart that shows these two metrics um, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click on these three dots and copy the chart go into the dash Control v for me to paste it you could also right click and, and and paste and now i have this this chart um, i'm going to increase the row height of these let me see if i can figure out how to do it resize rows let's make it 25 to make it a little bit bigger and i'm going to expand a out a little bit more it might not fit all names but it'll fit more of them and then i'll collapse b a little bit more um, I know that might be an issue here. I'm going to make this, sorry, just quickly make that 10. Um, okay. And now we have this chart and let's just remove a bunch of these names. Uh, I'm just going to get all, rid of all the James Hardens so that, so that it looks better. And again, so it, it'll accommodate for, I mean, however many players you want to select, I could select another player and he'll pop in there select another one he'll pop in there um, i could remove one and and things will change etc but let's deal with the formatting here so i'm going to edit the chart and i'm going to go to customize Man, i really i really want to use the bubble chart there's a metric where everything's like one Never mind. all right so what we can do here is let's let's say that, that we're fine with the chart background and, and all that stuff now we're going into the chart title uh i don't want a title um one thing that i that excel that is cool for excel is that in in the title you can go equals and you can use other cells to drive your axes and titles uh right now in google sheets you can't do that so i just typically 
I typically remove all the titles and all the axis, na axis names because I like to do it dynamically where you select a metric and the axis, the axis names won't accommodate for that. Um, and then you can also, I usually just write it on the side of what it means um, it's because of these limitations right now. So we got the, that done. The title is done. The axis titles are done. Now if we go to our series, I'll get to that later mostly, but I can increase the size of the point, and I will a little bit. And I will also change the color of the names. Those are the data labels from being blue to being white so that they show up better. And I can change the color of these points if I want to. And then I will, we could draw a trend line if that was, if we wanted to. And this is actually a pretty cool feature of these scatter charts is we could draw a trend line and we could also display the um, R squared value. And that could be pretty beneficial depending on what you want to look at here. But in our case, we were not interested in that. So now we're going to go to our legend. And again, I'm not going to use a legend because you'll see what, if I do put in a legend, it's just going to think that there's one series. Um, just because of the way that the chart has to be set up and that's not an accurate legend We actually know that the x-axis is FGA for 48 and the y-axis is turnovers per game So having this legend is not helpful. I Will go back to customize and go to the legend and say none and For the horizontal axis the only thing that I want to change is I want to change the text color to maybe be a grayish type of color um, that I can see and I'll change the font size to 10 and I'll do the same thing for the x-axis and notice I've been going through here in the chart editor um, step by step how to do it you could just as easily click on the axis and do it from there so I selected the x-axis now I'm changing the color of it and I am going to change the label size of it also and I'll keep in the minor grid lines or, or the grid lines because if you don't, this is another. So just be aware of this. If you if you remove the grid lines, then you're not going to see any of these lines here. Um, but you also won't see an a y axis line. And if you want to add a y axis line, and you have a white background, it'll be fine. But in this case, we have a dark background, and if I say is this the vertical axis show axis line it'll be black and there is no way to change the color of that that I know of so it just kind of looks weird so I'm gonna have the grid lines there for reference and I'm trying to get rid of this and now the last thing is grid lines and ticks and I'm fine with however it is right now let's just keep it um, I don't really want to mess around with it. Maybe I'll make the grid line color uh, a little bit darker. No, it's, it's as dark as it's going to get without being, without, or while being able to see it. Now, the last part of this is I'm going to remove all the names from this list except for Anthony Davis. And what we might want to do is add an image and a team. So maybe want to put the image in here, and I got to move this x-axis over a little bit. Um, say image, and we won't keep these labels here, or maybe we will say, uh, I'll say image, team, and let's move this over a little bit. And we're just going to do the exact same thing that we've already done. So this image here, let's copy the formula that we have in here. And I'm just going to paste it right here. And click enter. And we're referring to this guy that we pick here. And all we have to change is this, change it to this guy we pick here. And I already know that Anthony Davis is a bad example because I know his picture is, is, is bad or I need to change it. Um, but if I go to LeBron James and let's change this to A or it's A91.
Now we'll have a picture of LeBron there. And you know what we might decide to do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I wanted to show you like how to accommodate for a lot of people, but let's say that we don't need... We can always add them in. Oh, more just happened there. But let's say that... We, Well, that was weird. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's see if I delete these. Yeah, so the first time, I don't know what that error was, but anyways, um, I'm going to highlight all these. Resize the rows. Maybe it's the 30. Or maybe it's even bigger than that. Maybe it's a uh, resize row. So we're going to look at up to 10 people to 35. Now it kind of all fits on the same thing. And we can center these images. And we can, maybe we don't want to center the images. But anyways, now we can also get the team. So we can do again. Let's copy this equation that we have up here for this player. And let's paste it right in here. And all we have to do now is we need to switch, again, from matching the team logo to this team. We would have to match it to this person's team and this is just optional like if you want to do this you can and I generally don't like doing stuff like this um, but you could pull the team name into this column here and make it white or we could go to our dash filtered area that we have and I don't remember I'm just moving this chart out of the way we actually don't need it I'm gonna delete it um, and I actually should have done an if error here. Sorry, let me say if if there's an error with dash a91, make it blank, comma, error comma blank, and let's move it down. And we just said that we we're going to remove players 11 through 15, and I'll keep them there for now, but we don't need them. Maybe we also have something here called team. And then we can just copy what we have here, except change it a little bit. Or maybe we do it from scratch. So let's just uh, uh, let's do it from scratch. So I'll go equals index. Now what do we want? We want this person's team. We can go to our data set and we can select this the team. That's what we want in there. Comma. Well, what are we matching the row on? And we just did this not too long ago. This person's name. And let's lock that in. Comma to the name in here and let's go oops sorry I forgot to do the match so we want to look for something uh, we want to look for a team in column E and we want to match the player that we have in our dash filtered to the player name in here to get the right team and let's go comma zero exact match and close that off and now we have the team name I'll say if error, if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma blank, close the parenthesis, and I'll drag this down to player 15. So now, why did we do that? Well, we're looking for this player in the database, and this player is the first player that we select in our dashboard. If we select another one, um, Jason Tatum, then when we go here, he'll show up on the on this list and we'll get his team. That's one way to do it. That's the way that I would do it. Or you can just do it right here. Put pull their do that same equation and pull their team in here and make it white or something like that. But let's go. So we're gonna keep this formula the same. We're looking for something in list B to B. Index list B to B. So we're looking for a team logo. That's what we want in this cell. And we want to match. Now instead of the team in B58, which is right here for this person, we want to match the team in 
our dash filtered here for the first person. And I'm going to lock in the column, but not the row, so that when I drag this down, it'll apply to all of our players. And I'll click Enter. And now we have, oops, excuse me, the Lakers logo. And we'll do the if error thing that we always do. So if there's an error with this stuff, comma, let's make it blank, close that off. Now we did two equations here. And if I grab both of these and we drag them down to the bottom, Well, that's kind of weird. Oh, sorry. So I need to, right now we're looking, we're matching A91, and we have both of those locked in. So when I go here, it's also A91. Here it's also, we're looking for LeBron James, A91. But if we change this to A91 without the dollar sign, so it's not locked in, and click Enter, and we select these two and drag it down. Now it'll update for each name in this list. So now we have two players um, on our chart, two names, and the last thing that I want to do with this chart is I want to actually make these names smaller. I'm going to go edit chart and go to customize. I think it's in series. Let me go to our data labels and we can make the font size, let's say 10 and make it bold. Right now the position is auto, that's fine. It still gets cut off because we don't know what our axes are gonna be. Um, if we were using percentiles, which we could have done, and we still could do, actually, um, instead of using raw values, if we wanted to use the percentile values that we got before, we could do that, but we're not doing that. So we don't know what the axes are, which might end up in some players getting cut off sometimes, their names. It just is what it is. So this is the chart, and we can drag it over to here, and I'm going to remove image, and maybe let's make this, I'll make this look nice where I merge this, I say player, and this is team, and, and I'll deal with this formatting later, you, you don't really need to see this stuff, this is kind of just you'll see in the, in the end maybe if you if you check out like a video of me using this thing but and I'll organize this up but pretty much this chart should be able to so let's just uh, let's select a couple more players a lot of them I don't just selecting a bunch and if we change this to, instead of looking at FGA per 48 on the x-axis, we want to look at points per 48 minutes on the x-axis. Or I actually got that messed up. That's the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Or we could switch it in our, in our chart, but it's easier this way. Now we have points per 48 on the y-axis, and we might want minutes per game on the x-axis. And we can see any combination of things that we want to see. And yeah, I think that's I think that's all I got for now. The last thing that I will say is that for if you want to do a bubble chart, which one of the reasons why I reduced the number of players is because I really want to do a bubble chart. Um, I think it I think it's cooler, and you can have different colors and stuff. Is let's do this. I'm going to copy this chart, and I'm going to paste it here. So I did Control C and Control V, and you can tell, and you can choose which one you like more. Um, so I'll edit this chart, and in the setup, instead of a scatter chart, I want it to be a bubble chart, which is right. If I can scroll down right here, and we're gonna have to do some things again. Um, the axes are right; that's okay. The series is okay. Um, but we actually need the ID to be player, and then we can see the player's names in there. So this is displaying the same information, just in a different way with each player being a different color. Um, the way that you can have all the players being the same color is if you go to the edit the chart, and you remove this player series, all these will be the same color, and you can control the color of that. Um, you can also control the opacity of the circles. And you can also add a size. And um, what I'm 
I'm not going to do that, but I might actually replace the bubble chart. Now that I've reduced the number of players, I might reduce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this scatter chart. I think the bubble chart actually looks better. I wish I could make the bubble smaller, but I can't. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to bring this up here. And now I'm just going to format things a little bit and and, then, and we'll call it a day. So I will, I'm just going to align these to the left for now. And I'm going to, all right, so this is not merged. This is not merged. These are all merged. Not, not really feeling the merging. So I'm just going to format, I'm going to unmerge all of these cells. And then this is this will get a little bit complicated, but pretty much you want the to move the left hand. I don't know if I can even select it. The left hand cell over to the right because that's the one that our data is looking at. Just to unmerge these cells, and I'm going to do the same thing across here. I'm going to go to Format, Merge, Unmerge, and I'll move this over to the right to get rid of the other data validation drop down list, move it over to the right, and then hopefully I can. So if you can't select it, like I can't select this, it'll always be a drop down menu. I just use my arrow keys, so I'll hit the right arrow, and I'll get on top of this cell, and I'll move it over to the left, do the same thing here, right arrow, and I'll grab the cell, move it over to the left, and then Y axis, again, all these things, I'll probably make all the same size font, maybe I'll bold them all, and I will put them in the middle, and I will vertically align them in the middle, and I'll move this chart to cover the y-axis area. And let's, I'm gonna select both of those cells. I held down control, and so I clicked one cell, held down control, clicked the other one, and I'll make the background nice and dark, make the font white for now, and what we might decide to do is just group these things together with some sort of border. Maybe it's like a a lighter gray border and the line is kind of thick. And maybe we do the same thing here. And one strategy that we might, maybe I'll make these two cells the same color as the border. I think it's that color. Uh, maybe it's a little bit darker. Oh, these, these cells also have borders. So I'm just gonna make this border the same for everything. There we go, make the border the same for everything. The reason why these cells had different borders was because we copied and pasted them from somewhere else. And I will fill this in the same color. And it's, it's looking a little bit better, I think. One thing that I would like to do is maybe, because it's hard to tell which axis is which, is if we go in here into our chart, I clicked on the axis, maybe I make this text color yellow, and maybe I make this text color a different color, like a blue, even a lighter blue than that, so that people can see it, maybe even lighter than that. I went to more colors, I'm making it a light blue. And then what I can do, I don't I don't know how I feel about this yellow, it's, it's pretty striking, but with the x-axis, at least, I can change the font color in these cells to be that light blue. And then maybe we can quickly tell which axis is which. Like, for example, if I were to put these in, oops, in yellow, then at least we'd have a better idea of which axis is which. I don't know if I like this yellow, so I'm going to go back to white for now. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll go to white. And the last thing that I want to do is kind of adjust the way that this looks. So I'm going to edit this chart, go to the customize, and go to the series. And I want the color of the series, let's just say, to be this color. And I remember that there was a font styling. Maybe it's in the bubble area. Maybe the opacity is even, maybe the opacity is, is even lighter. And the chart style, no. Sorry, I, I don't, oh, here we go, the font. So the font color will be white. Now we can see the player names better and we can kind of see where they fit. 
Again, I don't like how the bubble sizes are so big, but I don't know a way around that. And I think that's that's all I got, aside from maybe adding some borders around these guys like that. So now we know each name in our drop-down list, and maybe this stuff is kind of a light gray. Light gray. Or, and we can make these two a dark, dark kind of header, and white there. And now the last thing that I want to show you uh, in this video is how to manipulate, like let's say that you don't want just all the bubbles to be the same size, or you want to segregate this information further. Um, and we went over a couple bad examples earlier, but if I go to edit chart, let, let's say that we want these colors of the circles to be organized by team. We can go to edit chart, and we can add a series, and let's select our data. And what we did in our dash filtered area here is we have a we have the player we have x-axis y-axis and team and we could select the team field and click OK and now team will be our series color and notice now that and how, how about let's add a legend so I'll go to edit chart and I will we can go to legend and put it on the top and now we can see the teams that are included here and we can always format the legend too. I usually have trouble when I try to click on it and I am, but go to edit chart, customize legend. We can go, the text color can be white and the font size can be 10. And we can adjust this in our theme. So let's, let's try this. So see how Orlando and OKC are the same color? That's probably my fault. So I'm gonna go to format my theme this is the theme that I'm using, and I customize it. I'm going to customize it further. Huh, maybe it's not, because I don't see... Oh, maybe it's because the original color I chose was that one. Maybe I'll make it blue. So, I'm going to go to my chart, edit chart, and I'm going to change the original color that I had it for my series. Oh, I guess you can just kind of pick, make that blue. And now let's just add a couple more players here from same teams or different teams. Let's just see what happens. I'm just picking random teams. So some of the colors are pretty similar, which is unfortunate, but at least you can have some segregation of, of teams here, and the way that you organize your colors will probably dictate that. And let's say that you did want the bubbles to change size based on something. Well, we have two options. We have two things that we can do here. First is, if we go back to our dash filtered, we could pick something. Pick a metric. Maybe we want our bubbles always to be sort, um, sorted, um, done by games played, which would be G. We can type in G here and do another index match like we've done here. Copy this, paste it, but now instead of matching um, that, we want to match N17, the metric that's an N17 to this list here, or to our metric. And I'll click Enter. Now this would mean that Aaron Gordon has 62 games played in this data set. We can drag this down to the bottom. And those are the games played for everybody. And if we go to our dashboard again and edit our chart, we can add a size and we can select from a range and go to our dash filtered and select all of these. Notice the header is selected too and we do that for everything. Click OK. Now the bubbles, the bigger bubbles, the bigger the bubble, the more games played a person has. So that would indicate that Al Farouk Amino doesn't have as many games played as some of these other guys. Now, if you wanted to make this dynamic, we could do a similar thing that we did here, where we select a metric and that would dictate the bubble size if we wanted to change this from G to GS and 
a bunch of other things. And maybe I'll just no, I'm not I'm not gonna go through it, but if we just have a list, let's say that we just had our we wanted we knew that we wanted the the bubble size to be toggled by one of our key metrics. So what we might do here is just get a list of our key metrics, let's say. And to do that, we can just go to our data and go data validation and pick from our range of key metrics in our list. So we're gonna go to our lists and I'm gonna select the key metrics that we have and click OK and click Save. And now this is a drop down of our key metrics, no matter what. And let's color it the same color that we do everything else and Maybe it's white and bold. So I'll pick a metric. It'll be points per game for now, and let's just make it nice and pretty by aligning it. And now what we can do is, in our dash filtered, instead of just typing in the letter G here, we can say this equals this cell, and click Enter. And now this is the points per game, and now when we go back here, these cells will be sized by points per game and if we change it to minutes per game the cells will resize if we change it to three point percentage again the cells will resize so that's another way to go about adding bubble size if you would like to do it that way so i hope this video um, was helpful and i will see you in the next one if there is one thanks for watching